This CNN podcast is brought to you by Vestas, number one in modern energy. Welcome. In today's podcast, isn't the first step to recovery admitting that you have a problem? Well, how can we get out of a recession if we are, in fact, in one, if the president can't even say it? The tough times, difficult times, sour time. It's a very slow economy. More on that perception. Also, for you country fans, I'd like to take you to the very spot where Garth Brooks and Huey Lewis did the video for their Taking What I'm Getting Because I'm Working for a Living song. Really? First, though, I wanted to show you behind the scenes. They're working here at CNN Center in Atlanta on our new control room for headline news. So the Morning Express with Robin Mead is going to come from here eventually. How long, guys, before? Three weeks, four weeks? It is so fancy smancy. So that's what you're going to see in the background today. Anyway, have you noticed people in power trying to avoid saying the dreaded, our word. Well, Jennifer Westhoven noticed it for one of her reports, and here is what the president is using instead of the recession word. He's concerned about people during this, oh, what would you call it? This, don't you dare say recession. He didn't. This difficult period. They're tough times. They're difficult times. It's a sour time. It's a very slow economy. In these uncertain times, it's a very difficult economic times. Democrat Chuck Schumer countered that the president has, quote, closed his eyes and put his hands over his ears. But you, the viewer, are using the R word a lot. And a lot of the viewers are saying that they're resorting to hawking stuff just to get money to make ends meet. Stephen from South Carolina emails, it's getting to the point where I may have to sell my car to afford to buy gas for it. Jim from Louisiana emails, my mother was going to pawn her wedding china for $50 to get gas and a little food. I gave her some money and brought it home. It is worth more than $50, and it's a family heirloom. Janice in Arkansas emails, we're not selling anything to make ends meet. We are cutting off certain services. Next is our satellite service, which means no more Robin in the morning. Janice, no! It really is heartbreaking to know, isn't it, just how much of um, a struggle that the rising gas prices, food prices, and prescription drug costs have, have put on our fellow Americans. So back in the new headline news control room that isn't live just yet, but it will be. This is um, Matt Planer. He's a technical director. He has to know all of these buttons. Watch. Watch the screen. Watch. I mean, I'm just having fun, like playing a piano on a kid. Look at that. But he, when he does it, it goes out live on the air. Oh, look at that. Am I messing it up? Probably. Look at Matt. <laughs> okay. You know, if you know the show, you've probably heard me refer to Matt, but you know that we do a salute to the troops every day. Hi, Robin. This is Julie Miranda calling from Tishomingo, Oklahoma. I would like to say hi to my husband, Sergeant Joseph Miranda, stationed at Camp Taji, Iraq, as a military police officer in the U.S. Army. Hi, sweetie. Isaiah and Elijah miss you so much. Well, meeting some of our military folks in person, you can't help but be amazed and impressed with their resolve and dedication. Now, this is Ryan, a Marine that I met while I'm seeing the Fisher House Golf Classic. Uh, he golfed for the first time that day with his Marine buddies since becoming an amputee in the service. Well, I thought I was going to be hurting. First of all, I didn't think I was going to make 18 holes. So mm -hmm. I actually did it, you know, and we played well as a team. And I had fun. So it's a little tough, but you know, you can over adapt and overcome. It's what we do. Uh, amazing attitude, don't you think? And I thought the same thing when on my plane flight back from DC to Atlanta, I was sitting right beside another military fella who was on his way back to Iraq. You know, he had a bunch of connecting flights. And all he could think about were his buddies there. I'm on my way back to Iraq. I'd just like to say hi to my uh, buddies in Charlie Company, 7th and 101st, Eagle Dust Off, Air Assault. You know, I was just really impressed that after something like eight months of being there, he was that chipper about going back after his his R and R, and just really exuded it in his face. You know, the the positive attitude about his mission. In fact, he said, "Well, it's not all hard work. It can be fun too." Amazing. Thank you, troops, for all that you do. Did you know here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway where we're we're shooting a promo right now? See the crew. 
you can come out here and actually drive one of the NASCAR cars. This is called the, uh, what's it called? The Petty Driving Experience. These are a bunch of corporate people. They like corporate people in those cars. And uh, they have no experience. He showed it off. And they get to drive the cars for like team building. I love it. Cody, who's helping us out today, has an interesting point. I said, what's that song with Garth Brook and Huey Lewis, isn't it? Taking what they're giving because I'm working for a living. What did you know? Uh, they shot it here. Taking what they're giving because I'm working for a living. They shot it here. They shot it here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Were you here? No, but the guys over there were. They don't, security doesn't let you close to them, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, matter of fact, Garth came up and was introducing himself to everybody. Oh. Stuff like that. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You got any behind the scenes stories? Uh, no, but my old battalion chief does. Yeah? yeah. What do you say? Uh, we'll have to ask him. <laughs> He's so safe. So safe. Okay, so back in what will be the new control room here for headline news. Look, everything is so new here that even the chairs aren't unpacked yet completely from the styrofoam. <laughs> okay, now I wanted to show you a reefer rewind. The new guy is getting comfortable with us, and I think it's starting to show. Watch this action. Familiarity, I guess, can breed contempt. Rafer's Advantage. Here is Rafer Weigel. Rafer Weigel with more in sports. Wake up! Wake <laughs> up! You can do it. <laughs> you, you, you go ahead. All right. <laughs> I'll take it from here. Yeah, exactly. This is kind of a bizarre twist. Oh. Cruz became the butt of jokes in 2005 when he, he kept jumping on the couch, professing his love for Katie Holmes, who's now his wife. You know the guy who bought it. You know what he did? Yeah. <laughs> All right, he didn't actually do that, but he did pay. I hope I didn't break that. No, it was good. Rafer's Rewind. Time for your viewer emails. We're going to read those. You know who's going to do the honor today? Rafer! 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 Would you please read the viewer emails? All right. Well, the first one... Have a sit down, too. All right. Okay. This is from Howard in Shreveport. The first thing he says is, Robin is the best! Exclamation point. But then he has a good question. You have to read so many, I'm embellishing a little bit, uh, downright downer disgusting. stories, depressing, the economy is hurting, but somehow, how do you maintain such a super positive attitude to quote his words? You know, the stories do affect you. How could you not be affected by some of these things that we, we read and some of these stories that we cover? But in the end, I mean, I'm happy to be doing this job, and so maybe that's the center that I come back to. It shows. Thanks. Oh, I got one for you. Gail from Iowa says, I saw an old episode of the TV show Charmed. <laughs> One of the characters bore an amazing resemblance to our own sports guy, Rafer Weigel. She says our own. I love that. Uh, is it possible that Rafer was cavorting with Alyssa Milano? Cushy job. You yeah. used to be on there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I true. love that show, by the way. Yeah, well, yeah. I only did one episode. They didn't ask me back for another What one. was your character? Uh, I was her love interest for one week. I was some, I think the fact that I was playing a college kid at the age of 28 was, I think, a little bit of a stretch. But Do you have another one? Yes, I got one for you, but this is really just a comment. Robin's show rocks. Finally, a new show that is upbeat and has a positive vibe. The music behind the, uh, the scenes. Oh, our producers tours, will like that. Yeah, the extras are great. Keep it up, exclamation point. That is from Baker in South Carolina. Well, as you look around this room, you know you know the saying, don't take credit if you don't want the blame, but all the credit goes to all of these people right here, over here. A bunch of them are hiding underneath the desk because they don't want the credit. But <laughs> it's, you know, it's this team behind this. They're the ones who make it work. And you, the viewers, so thank you. Does that wrap it up for that the emails? That wraps it up for the emails. You did a fine job, Did I Rafer. do okay? You really did. All right. And with that, how about I see you tomorrow morning, along with Rafer, right, for the show. And uh, thanks for podcasting. Ooh, don't be looking up my <laughs> nose. Don't you hate that shot? Ooh. <laughs>